Hello IC, my name is Sergio and here to journey in God's word together with you. Yesterday we started Luke chapter 13 verses 1 through about 5 and today we're going to be doing Luke chapter 13 verses 6 through about 9 and I'm just going to start reading here. And he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree. I found none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year until I dig around it and put manure on it. Then if it shall bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. So this, the parable is based off of the idea of was happening in the previous verses which is repenting uh, that if you don't repent we shall perish so obviously if we repent there's obviously fruit of repenting we can't say we repented and there be no change otherwise it's not repenting right and but we need to back up even a little bit further to the end of Luke chapter 12 because this is all one teaching all one setting and so Jesus is saying to be ready that the Lord will come like a thief in the night and he will find the faithful dressed and ready and the unfaithful won't be ready, right? So then it's kind of an alert. If you're not ready, start getting ready, right? And that's what he's saying at the beginning of Luke chapter 13. And we just talked about yesterday how that's that's nothing new that everyone has strayed no one has no one is righteous no not one i think we can all say that we've all strayed and disobeyed otherwise we're, we're a liar as first john says he who says he has not sinned is a liar i confess i've sinned i've strayed but the, the the ultimate point is to come back but when we come back there's fruit of coming back and so jesus is giving that parable of like a fig tree if you come to a fig tree you expect to find fruit but if you don't find fruit then it's not bearing any fruit get rid of the tree he's offering more time and we see god's patience along with his grace his grace is to give us another chance and then his patience is to give us more time not just give us a little while and say oh you didn't make a change you didn't repent good enough you're done no he's so loving and so patient there's an Old Testament example of this, and that's Jonah. When Jonah is given the task of preaching to Nineveh, he doesn't obey the first time. He actually goes the other way, clear across the world, but then God stops him. He stops him in the belly of a, of a, of, of a fish. Most of us know it as a whale, right? But it was just a fish. But he spits him out, because that's his other chance. That's his other chance to try it again, Jonah repent and that's the message that Jonah gives to the people of Nineveh repent so that's one example of how God has just shown himself over and over to be patient another example of patience is later on in the New Testament that's with the apostle uh, Saul who becomes Paul for a while he was killing Christians murdering them but then he has an encounter with Jesus in Acts chapter 9 and his whole world is reoriented it's very evident that he made a change but he needed time for that and so I just want to give you that encouragement today that God's not done with you he's giving you another chance and it's your choice what to do with that gift of time and patience I don't know about you but for me I want to embrace that second chance Lord pour manure, dig, do what you got to do, Lord. I want to be real. I want my change to be real. And that's the encouragement that Jesus has is not just one and done. Oh, if you don't repent, then you're done. No, he's giving patience. And that's another example of how we know for certainty that Jesus is the son of man. And that's what the whole point of Luke is, that we may know for certainty that the things that we have been taught and what we have been taught is that jesus is the christ he is the the chosen one the to save the world from their sins 
And he alone has the keys to life and salvation. And that's just what I want to point you to. And if you come back to him and abide in him, he will cause fruit of your repentance to be made known. But you can't do that on your own strength. Only he can. And he's proven that all throughout the scriptures with Jonah and with Paul. So I just want to offer you guys that encouragement today. God bless you guys.